Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and in today's episode we are going to be checking out Flow Pro from Parallel 42 which greatly enhances the user interface and has a ton more options and versatility than the freeware version by far. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future guides that come along down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below and thank you to all of my current subscribers. All right, guys, so in the previous video, we talked about the freeware version and some of the enhancements that it offers, and it certainly offers some great ease of access and a much more fluid access to the menus and various toolbar options that are available in Microsoft Flight Simulator. The Proware version does significantly more and has significantly more customization as well as a significantly uh, further enhanced UI engagement from the user end standpoint. Now, one of the things that I want to get out of the gate right away is in the previous episode, I made it very clear that we were unsure whether or not it was um, accessible to users in virtual reality. And then after further information was provided from Parallel 42, they said, no, they didn't think that it was going to be. However, that has since changed. It sounds like over the last few days, Parallel 42 had a major breakthrough and this software is now fully accessible in all versions of the software to those users in virtual reality. So another major improvement and milestone for the Parallel 42 group and a big round of applause for them because that's certainly something worth talking about. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to break down some of the major differences between the freeware and the proware version, and I'm going to talk to you guys about some of the other options that come with it as well. I'm going to do my best to keep this as a relatively short video because I want you guys to experience this for yourself, but I want to make sure that you guys truly do see the advantages of using this. So one of the things that you do want to make sure that you have available is the uh, help menu binding. Let me show you guys real quick what I'm referring to. So by default, if you go into your keyboard settings and you go to menu, you should find one that says help menu. And by default, that key is set to tab. Now I do recommend binding this somewhere to like if you're on an Xbox controller, you know, put it on a controller somewhere as well as uh, on your HOTAS or something like that rather than just using the keyboard. But if the keyboard is what's required, that's what works. So that's what we're gonna be using today as I am actually not in the sim pit today. So one of the things that we're going to address here first is once you hit tab, wherever your mouse pointer is, that's where the wheel will uh, display. And then you're always welcome to click in a gray area and you can drag it around as you choose. Now, a lot of the same features, obviously, that exist in the freeware version certainly exist in the proware version. So you have aircraft-specific functionality. As you can see, it says Bonanza here, so it even identifies the aircraft. I did not have to tell it what plane we were flying. Um, as well as obviously general versions or uh, general variations. Now, one of the cool things that I want to show you about the Proware version is in the Proware version, you can also create folders. So if I were to click on this aircraft folder here, you can see we've got a couple different options here. Like for example, here's all lights. And if I click on that, I believe it actually probably just shut them all off and it looks like it did. But let's go ahead and go back into that and click it again. And there's all of our lights. So, and and by the way, that's just an option that I set up. You can have landing lights, taxi lights, um, interior lights. There's a couple different options when it comes to lights. And I'm going to show you guys how to find some of that stuff very, very easily here in just a minute. But uh, one of the other big things that I really enjoy about this is because of the folder structure, it allows you to break things down systematically, whether you want a weather section, um, an aircraft section, as we're seeing here, um, weights, balances, fuel, fuel additions. There are a couple of different options, and I'm going to show you guys some of that. And you also have the ability with the pro version to do your own scripting using the LVARs and SIMVARs. And we'll talk briefly about that. I am no pro at it, but I definitely want to make sure that you guys know it's available. And those of you who already know this stuff, you're gonna be able to jump on that right away. So let's go ahead and come back up to the previous menu. Now, one of the things that I really enjoy about this particular version in the ProWare version is the camera setup. Here is the new camera UI. Much like some of the other really cool um, 
instruments that we've seen before for camera management, uh, such as, for example, the Chase camera uh, that uh, Parallel 42 is very, very known for in some of the other flight simulators which is probably one of the best camera handling systems that is out there. I really wish Asobo would unlock the camera views because that is the whole reason why we don't have a chase camera in Microsoft Flight Simulator is because for whatever reason, Asobo has made it so developers can't access it. So it's kind of bumming me out, but that is what it is. Now, one of the things I really like about this new UI setup is you are very easily, very quickly able to navigate through your different cameras, especially as you start getting more and more familiar with them and knowing which ones you're looking for. It's very seamless, very rapid, very easy to use. I really enjoy this particular uh, layout significantly better than uh, the default version. Um, now, one of the things that I really am impressed with, and this is both with the freeware and the payware version. Uh, now, the, this particular UI only exists in the payware versions. It is the freeware version gets you to the default uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator camera controls, actually all of the default windows. Uh, so all of the customized windows, the new UI layouts that you're going to see here for uh, camera and weather and fuel and balance and weights, etc. cetera, uh, those are all going to be in essentials and above. Okay. So keep that in mind. But uh, one of the things I really like is how rapidly it responds. It's very rapid, very seamless, very easy to use. So let's go ahead and close that window. Let's bring it back up here and let's talk about some button management. So if we click on hold on any button, we get the um, editor that we saw before. Now, one of the things that you have here is, for example, we can do the gear, okay, landing gear. We can search for light. Oops, if it helps if I'm not typing like a dork. And you see you have a bunch of different lights that you can switch to and assign based on different um, you know designs that you guys wish to have. Um, so there's certainly a ton of different options that are available right that you can set straight in the wheel. Okay, now the cool thing about the search bar is the search bar allows us to do just about anything here. Um, now we're going to get into that in just a minute here. Um, but for example, the time here, let's go ahead and let's see here. I want to actually use this one. This allows you to export your configurations and your designs out to, uh, the desktop and where you can share it with friends and, and other users of the application and vice versa, where they're able to share it to you. So if you, if you know someone who has a really cool setup or you want to upload your profiles, you're actually able to do that on the, uh, uh, pro version and essentials, I believe. Um, and then the next thing that we want, let's say, you know, I'm going to throw the, and you can see, you can also drag and drop. We're going to throw the, uh, position here up there. Cause we're going to take a look at that here in just a minute here. But one of the other things that I really like is I'm going to actually swap this with the time. We're going to hit proceed. I want you guys to see the time menu. The time menu is pretty cool. Uh, same with the top of descent, uh, script. Now this gives you the option. This is what I was talking about earlier. Now I'm not going to touch on this too much yet, but if you are good with a JavaScript and you're good with the SIM bars and things like that, um, and you, you understand how to read those and access those. So you need basic JavaScript understanding and obviously the SIM bars within Microsoft flight simulator, you can create your own controls. You can create your own utilities, and this is going to open the door also to other developers on flight sim.to and all of the other sites that we manage. Uh, they're going to be able to post things that we're going to be able to use directly with the simulator that's going to, again, further enhance the configuration. So just right there, when you guys think about future and coming down, uh, some of the scripts that everybody else is going to be creating are now going to be able to be implemented using this tool, further enhancing the, the, uh, the advantage of having it. Now, I want you guys to just sort of peek around down here. You guys can see just a couple of the different options. You know what? I'm actually going to come up here and I'm going to type fuel. Okay, so by adding fuel, we can. We, this is a button that literally adds 25% more fuel than what you have. So if you're in a bad spot, maybe didn't do our math quite right, like yours truly has done once or twice, we could drop that in there. And now whenever I click that button, it will automatically increase the aircraft's fuel load by 25%. And we'll take a look at how seamlessly, how seamlessly that operates here in just a second. Let's move on to weight. Okay, weights and balances menu. Um, I'm gonna drop that, let's see here. Uh, let's put that in the settings cog. The settings cog basically just stayed the same. There's a few different UIs that you can change and enhance. We're not gonna go over that. It's, I went over that in pretty good detail in my previous video. I wanna show more of the, the slim functionality that we have here now and the new UI setup. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and close the editor at this time. And let's go ahead and start taking a look at this. So let's go to the weights and balances menu here. 
Now that brings up the standard uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator menu, but again, much easier uh, than going to the toolbar, much cleaner it feels. I don't know if it's easier or not, but it's definitely cleaner. And having that just real quick tab button certainly makes a big difference. Now, we just check out how seamlessly the fuel loads. Boom, you guys can see down here our fuel increased dramatically. Click it one more time, and let's just go for full. Boom, all done without having to worry about using any sliders or anything like that or having to pause the sim or having to go into the menus. We just had everything right at the ready. Now, one of the things that I really enjoy about this now is the weather. Let's go into the weather here for a second. Okay, so first route the weather, all I have to do is open it up and I've got my wind speed, wind direction, and I've got my current barometric pressure. Okay, so that's really nice. We can come down here, click on the live weather setting if you guys want, and we can actually load any of the presets that I currently have set up inside the sim, which again, makes things very, very seamless and very, very easy. Just a simple click and I'm back at it, back to live weather cakewalk, right? Now, it goes further than that. Let's say we wanna adjust the time of day. So we can simply come on down, and I actually don't think I put, oh, there it is. Open up the time wheel. Okay, now you can see we've got this, um, partitioned meter here. And if I just click wherever that location is, you can see our time is now changing. Let's us know, your, there's your dawn and dusk, the dark gray areas. Okay, come down here. Or we can come back to current. Keeping things very, very simple. Again, very, very smooth. And if you want to, you can lock the time so it doesn't change. It'll just stay this time the entire flight if for any reason you needed to do that. Okay, makes things very, very nice. Now, one of the extra things that I'm kind of curious about, let's go ahead and try something here. And we're actually gonna go back into the editor for just a second. Oops. And let's go here. Let's go to our folders. And I am gonna kind of look for pause. Oh, no pause. So that would be a neat functionality, hint, hint, guys, uh, to add to it. I think that would be really awesome to have a pause button. Now, let me look up here through here and make sure I didn't miss something that might be there. I don't think I did, but that would be a neat thing to add. Now that was just me doing the hunt for myself, but you saw how quickly I was able to simply type in what I was looking for and get out of the editor when I'm done. Now, one of the other cool things, top of descent. Now keep in mind guys, we are on the ground, right? Now we are currently, um, I, you know, I actually don't remember where we are. Let's find out where we are. Let me show you how we're gonna do that. So we're gonna back out of here and I'm just gonna go for, oh, there we go, meet our. Just started typing Meetar. Here's where we are. We're at. Uh, we're in Kansas. It looks like. So now the other thing that we can do here. Wow! Look at this. Look at all these things. Brought up just by typing that. Let's go back to TOD. Top of descent. And let's say I want to know what my top of descent is to KTUS Tucson International. Now keep in mind we have no speed, right? Currently, we're not doing anything. So it says descend zero nautical miles from KTUS. It's because we're not flying. We don't have no altitude. You know, there isn't anything to do. But it does tell us in 692 nautical miles from 718 feet, which is technically what our elevation is, at 1,500 feet per minute. Okay, so it will actually calculate your current top of descent based on current altitude, current airspeed, and where you're wanting to go. You simply type TOD and what you're looking for, and bam, you're on your way. And you can do this anytime it says the auto search bar. So the next thing I want to show you guys is a real quick teleport system. The teleport system is very, very awesome. Now, if you have friends that are along, these are all the guys who are currently uh, friended with me. Like, I've got my buddy Green Ranger here sitting here on the world map. He even tells me where he's at. Now, once he logs in and gets to fly, Lion, I can actually drop him a visit here by, uh, oh, looks like he might have jumped out. Darn it. I could have jumped in and joined him right away. Now, keep in mind, you know, we're not flying. We're on the ground. We don't have any airspeed, so I'm not going to do that at the moment. <clears throat> but I could also use this to example, let's say I get to decide to get a weed up my tail and I need to go do my run at uh, TFFJ, which is St. Bart's. Okay, I can come right here, select my parking spot, hit go, and off we go. Now, one of the cooler aspects about this is it actually does tell you, wait for all scenery to load and then press ready. So it gives you the heads up that you want to be patient. Wait, we're going to let the ground continue to roll in here and show you guys how seamlessly and, and easily this operates. It really is quite impressive. And there it is. See, and that's why we wait is all that bouncing around. Uh, can certainly cause the plane to crash if you uh, hit ready too soon. So there we go. That's good. We have the tarmac down. So now hit ready and we're back in the seat. But again, easy, seamless, time of day remain the same. Don't have to worry about that. You can actually create favorites. So 
we can add a TFFJ. We all know that's one of my favorites. And now I've just added this location as a favorite that I can very quickly spawn to at any time that I choose. So there's a ton of different options and a ton of different features that are available with this new version. Oops, wrong button. One of the things that I really actually enjoy is the Medar, the, how quickly you can grab the Medar here. And let's see here, let's just do TFFJ. Oops, again, typo. I have a keyboard that's ghosting. Now, one of the things that I do run into actually quite often with TFFJ is that Microsoft Flight Simulator does not see there it is no meter, but it did give us the meter information for Princess Juliana, which is just a few miles down the road here. So, you know, you could use that at least as a, as a starting point. But again, this is actually very common uh, for uh, St. Bart's. Every time that I've ever come out here, Microsoft Flight Simulator never provides me with the uh, meter information, which means I can almost guarantee they probably pull it from Princess Juliana in real world, I would imagine. But that's just speculation. Um, obviously, I'm not a real pilot, but just one of the many things that you have options here. Now, with the auto search bar, I do love that you can do also short keys like landing lights, LL for landing lights, brings up our landing lights, logo lights, all lights function that we were talking about previously. We can go into trim, reset your trim, elevator trim. Here's all your reset trim controls if you're worried about your trim being all over the place and you don't feel like waiting for it. Um, again, the gear, if you want to bring that down. Flaps, I believe, was another option that I saw. Flaps up, flaps down controls. These are all buttons that you can very easily add or very easily access to. And you can do this with almost anything. Your weights, your balances, calculators. There's all kinds of stuff that pops up here that makes things quite a bit easier to use. Um, autopilot vertical speed. I mean, there's just a ton of different things that are available with this application. One of the things that I'm even more excited about, as I mentioned earlier, is the community additions that are going to come along with this, especially with that script. Uh, ability being a part of it. You're going to get a lot of really neat creative uh, scripting that people are going to be doing in regards to this uh, particular tool. Parallel 42 did a fantastic job with Flow in cleaning up this particular UI. Now, I mean, right down to, if you guys notice, the white handlebar that's normally up at top when you move your mouse around is also gone. I do not have a no handlebar tool installed. This is Flow that is doing that. So not only did it remove that, but if you mouse up, look how seamlessly it comes into the window now. It's not just boom, following in they just cleaned it up made it look a bit nicer and then of course you have the ability if you choose to completely disable flow by simply clicking on that button when it goes gray it's disabled we still don't have to worry about the handlebar bring it back up and we're back in action and again settings menu comes up real quickly touching on that again you guys can see there are different scripts you have some integration with twitch such as uh the twitch chat window if you're someone who likes to use twitch you could actually overlay your chat window directly inside the simulator and be able to see what everyone's saying to you without having to switch screens or have a second uh device monitoring your chat window for you <clears throat> so they really again outdone them done themselves with this particular version i'm really really uh grateful that I was given the opportunity to uh, be a part of this testing and be a part of this, um, you know, uh, sharing this with you guys as a community. I highly recommend you give this a shot, guys. I believe that the Priceware versions is $25 for the Pro version, $15 for Essential. And then, of course, there is a free version if you guys want to start there and just sort of mess around with the wheel. The freeware version is rather limited in comparison. Doesn't have a lot of the really fancy UI features that, uh, that the Essentials and Pro versions do, but certainly uh, should give you guys an idea of whether or not you want to integrate that with your particular simulation. And again, please remember that it is now officially working for virtual reality. So you guys want to check that out if you're in VR. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Link to this product will be down in the description below, can be found on orbix.com. And as always, stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.